you know, we, we're at a time where we couldn't be more pressurized, could we? The resources ever diminishing, the demands ever so much increasing, fewer people, less resources, more need, and yet everyone in this room is digging deep and using this time to transform their organizations. That is a really hard thing to do. In some ways, the firefighting is something we know and we understand and we just keep doing it. But to pause, to press that pause button, to stand back and think how we can fundamentally address what's going on in our organizations and transform our relationship, as Catherine said, between our services and the public, really empower people to be in as much control of their lives as they possibly can. To do that as effectively as you're doing that in the times we're in takes not just commitment, but enormous courage. Um, and I'm um, humbled by the stories today. It's incredible what people have started. And the fact that people recognize it's an ongoing journey, Dave's point, you know, ultimately if we, we have a destination in mind, and we know where we want to get to, we can stay focused. We can use our energy to do those things. And ultimately, that benefits us all and reduces the amount of firefighting and the hard work. And also what we've heard is that that is um, encouraging to everyone, increases morale. It feels like such a much better fit, doesn't it, between the service users and the challenges they face and us getting alongside people and helping them to resolve it. But it's a, a big thing up there, leaders of the transformational change. Um, that's how we see you all. Uh, you are taking that transformation forward. And it has to be a longer term commitment and you have to be supported. Um, when Catherine talks about making that argument for you on behalf of you all, she does that with enormous vigor um, and people are listening. But they wouldn't, she wouldn't be able to do that job for you unless you were producing some of the stories that you're producing that makes that possible. So it's, it's about that whole team approach. One of the things that I noticed listening to you this morning was that in every area, there is that combination of the change in the system, the support from the top, and the creative energy uh, from the ground. And you have to have all of those things. But one of the things I noticed from your presentations is they don't all start in the same place. So at the beginning, for some areas, they had senior management support. In other areas, you created senior management support by showing them the results that you were getting. But ultimately, that has to be joined together. So ultimately, you have to, in order to do what uh, Maria was talking about, to be the roots that grow the branches, you have to have the soil for that to grow in. Um, and the people in charge of that have to be joining with you. But it doesn't necessarily have to start with them. They can learn from you. Um, and that's what I learned as I listen this morning. You know, Eileen Munro, in one of her papers on child protection and the kind of children's work that we have, talked about, she, she, talked her, she called her paper, You Can't Grow Roses in Concrete. That was her title. Uh, and what she's saying is there's massive potential for people to bloom, blossom, and grow in their professional creativity, but we have to create the soil. But our starting point could be the blossoming creative work that you're doing and then people start to dig up the concrete and provide some soil for you to work in. So that's the kind of um, analogy that uh, we're looking at over the next years working together. So my, my job is just to help you think about where we're going um, over this phase two. It's part of the ongoing commitment to you all and to your work, a chance for everybody to uh, share together their ideas and have some plans for the future and then we'll be meeting together to unpick some of that. So we're really thinking about that mentoring and coaching side and as we've heard how important that is for everyone. If we don't continue to support the practice, um, we can't get to where we want to be. Um, some of the wording of the act, and things that are important to us all here is to think about the meanings behind the words and that exercise uh, that you've just done with us is perfect for that. Because here's some words, what do they actually mean? And people grow their confidence, don't they, from thinking about what are the meanings behind the words? I could just use the words, um, but what does it really mean to me and how does it affect our practice? Um, and what the act said was that um, we are required to 
ascertain and have regard to individuals' views, wishes, and feelings. Um, and from that, we can identify outcomes. But what does that all mean in practice? What does that look like? Um, how do we help staff to ascertain the views, wishes, and feelings of service users? What we know is that doesn't mean talking to someone in a very challenged um, and frightening or fearful situation and asking them what matters. It takes a very skilled and sensitive conversation to engage with that person. We can't ascertain views and feelings unless we are supporting skilled staff to sensitively engage around those things. And then to have regard to those views and feelings means the organisation has to really work hard to listen to the service user through their staff and then respond in a way that is meaningful. So we can see the whole transformational change just grasped in those few words, but we have to make sure that it works in practice. And then to clarify the nature of outcomes, those kinds of exercises are so useful because people get a bit stuck on it and uh, overcomplicate it. And if we're really listening and giving due regard to what people feel and wish, then it turns into something that naturally becomes an outcome. So we need to be thinking about all of those things. And in the ongoing work that we'll all be doing together, we'll have a chance to continue to think about those meanings behind the words and how we're going to manage to support our staff. Just briefly, some of the principles about what we need to be thinking about is ensuring um, that we're helping staff to have constructive, sensitive, engaging conversations, not just with individuals, but with families. And over the years, we know that we have limited staff to thinking about people as individuals and then assessing against criteria and thresholds. And that's diminished the skill, well, it hasn't diminished their skill because people are ascertaining what's going on in family dynamics, but we have never had a place to really turn that into something real. So thinking about that family dynamic is really important. Uh, Catherine mentioned the workshops I've been doing with commissioned um, services and what they're saying is they're feeling these new care plans coming through and they're getting a much more holistic feel to them. So it's happening out there. They're getting care plans that are much more family dynamic focused. They're, they've got a wider picture of people's outcomes. And then they're thinking, where does my provider service fit in to helping that person achieve that outcome? So that's happening out there and it's working. We need to be helping people think critically. Enormous skills across Wales in all our workforce. Giving people the kind of space that you've all been talking about to really think creatively, develop critical uh, thought, to analyse actions, and to be clear about how purposeful and intentional their work is. Again, I think Dave mentioned how life can drift on and we keep busy, but what are we being busy about? Um, so getting alongside people and helping people to focus their thinking, absolutely crucial. So in all of your areas, there will be evidence of how you've done that, how you've created those spaces. And then what we are asking of staff needs to be in the right soil. It has to work in practice. Otherwise, people say, well, this has been asked of us on top of all these other things. And actually, when I come to fill in the form or go into supervision or take my case to panel, nothing's changed. It all has to change in order to support the best practice. But it starts with those stories you create of your best practice, so many of them. Um, and from there, we grow a system that supports that. Rather than the system devising itself and then inflicting itself on staff, and therefore service users. So turning that around and making sure that we're thinking critically about what works. Um, people mentioned new formats, keeping those flexible, making those your own, ensuring they're congruent with the style and approach that you're encouraging in your staff. Easy to say, not easy to do, but evidence of that hard work right the way through this room. We need to be thinking about those things. So um, the two-day programme that um, we'll all be taking part in is to further advance some of that, to, for us to have time to think about the meanings behind the words, to 
clarify and practice some of the skills together to share ideas, the key messages that we might want to uh, take to others, because all of you are influencing much wider than your direct teams. So you're influencing your whole organization, other professional groups, your um, elected members, your senior management. What is it that is working there? What are the messages that are getting across? We'll have a chance to talk about that in our two days and deepen some of the sense of what works and what doesn't. Um, and certainly thinking about evidencing and demonstrating um, how we continue to capture those stories of outcomes and how that can then inform the system more. Um, just thinking about how important it is to build confidence in staff because they feel unsure about outcomes. I just had a couple of examples of um, review conversations with people who were moving towards their outcomes. I'll just read those out to you briefly. There's one from adults and one from children's. And this is in the adults one. So it's important to think about outcomes, not as the ups and downs as e of each day, because that's very changeable, but where people are in relation to their hopes and aspirations overall. So it's not the ups and downs. It certainly isn't described as a service. So it's definitely not a service, and it's not the ups and downs. So it is about having achieved a sense of what that person's outcome is, and then being able to reflect on where they are. Um, I don't know if I can do five things at once. So. Here. She said, I still have some low days, but, if I, but I know that if I talk to my friend Mary, it helps me through those. Ultimately, I can still look out of this window and see the view I love. I can still ring my daughter in Australia and have a warm conversation with her. It can be lonely sometimes, but I really like the people who call each day. They know me. They understand my sense of humor. And of course, I still have my postman and milkman who've been calling for so many years. I'm still part of my community. It's okay, and it's the best it can be for me. That is a re reflection on where I am towards my outcome, utterly subjectively described about what's important to me. But it's not so hard, is it, when it's in an ordinary conversation? We need to remember that. I'll just give you a children's example. My children are much more settled. They are talking more and playing well together. We have meals together and cuddles at bedtime. There are tough days. I miss my boyfriend and I feel lonely, but I remind myself of all the positives we've achieved. This is the mum I wanted to be. I am making new friends gradually and finding ways of talking to people I trust when I feel low. You can feel the work, can't you? You can feel the work that the social worker has done with that young mum. All the hard decisions she had to make, separating from a partner in order to put her children first. But captured in her words, that is a proper reflection of her movement towards her outcome. So when we think about it in terms of our service users, their language, what's good enough for them, um, and how they're going to struggle through that change and how we help them get there, it isn't so hard. It's the skilled work that everybody's already doing. We just have to find a way of capturing that. So we'll be talking a bit more about that and about um, creating that kind of strategic approach. What's the best thing we can be doing as we get go forward together as a group of mentors, coaches, and leaders of this transformational change in Wales? So today is part of that opportunity to consider the strengths in your area, to consider what you need to do next to build on those existing strengths. That's what this bit of our day is about. So if you would take some time in your tables, in your areas, to think about what does this mean for me? What's this brought up for me? Uh, what do I need to consider as my own personal next steps? What do I need to be doing? And also what I would like others to do to support me. We'll just take a couple of pointers from that uh, as themes before we round up and finish today. But this is a time for you to really think um, about next steps for you. So 20 minutes or so in your groups, think about that and then we'll take some feedback around the groups.
We're just going to take a few minutes, literally. Um, the most important thing was your conversation and what plans you have together as you go forward. Looking forward to meeting all of you again in a few weeks' time, uh, which is lovely. But we're just going to go around each table. Any one thing that struck you um, that came out of your conversation? So just a brief comment that uh, on where your thinking is today as you go. Who wants to give the comment here at this table? One thing. We're at a stage in um, Torvine where we need to review what we've been doing so far and go back to the drawing board perhaps and bring some um, Jill Pratlett back into the circle and discuss what we've been doing and how well we've been doing it and some of the things that are not working so well. Lovely. So that's a real taking stock moment. Let's pause. Let's take stock of what we're doing. Let's pull in senior managers again and have a discussion about where we are as we move forward. So is that where you are? Anyone else from this table, Anglesey? Um, yes, on behalf of Anismon, I don't think I can add to that because we had a very similar conversation, um, recognizing that we haven't taken enough time to reflect on what we've done already and to have a good enough plan of where we would like to be in three, six months and, and longer maybe. So again, sitting back, and I think that's why today has been great, because we've come down and we've taken the day to reflect. So it's built in on that, really. So for any uh, journey as challenging as this, it's about revisiting our vision. Where do we want to get to in the medium? in short term, but also look behind, see how much we've achieved and remind ourselves. So that's a really important um, job to do, to just reflect on that. Lovely, thank you. How about here? Who would like to say one thing? Um, I like the exercise that was done and I think it's just going back into the teams isn't it when we do our uh, peer mentoring groups as well and just we you know we looking at that and taking it back to basics and you know having a look at what is being delivered and ensuring that we you know consistent with the messages and, and working in an outcome focused way as well. So those practical things about really getting down into the detail of the the words and what it means and how it looks like when it's written down on a care plan yeah you happy with that? How about here? Anything that struck you that you're taking away? Anybody want to offer that? Um, I would like to say that the red, amber, green is on the agenda next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found that really interesting and really thought-provoking. We do all say mobilise, transfer, blah, blah, blah. And actually, for that outcome to be personal and truly personal, we've, we've got to throw those away. So I'm hoping that we can develop our greens. <laughs> um, you asked about the strengths. I feel that in terms of the team, um, there's a lot of buy-in within, um, within the team. We've gone on a journey in a very short distance of time with very, very limited resource to any form of training, really. And I think that the strengths in going forward is what the team's achieved. So it's our own achievements. And um, we're actually presenting an extended version of what we did today for our adult services staff day next week. Um, so hopefully um, we've also offered to share that with some colleagues here today. Um, and we're looking forward to visits from other authorities to help us all lo look at how we can take this on. So some new and creative uh, methodologies which you grasp immediately and want to put into action but then you know the ongoing thinking about how we're going to engage wider people in this lovely how about this table I'm gonna forget which table I've been to um, I think I think we decided because we represent um, three of our four services I suppose from Denbyshire and um, so we talked about um, doing some work across all of those teams we think our structures are, are quite good but um, we wanted to do some work on reviewing things like supervision forms um, you know quality assurance forms all that kind of stuff just to reinforce the the, the outcomes basically we wanted to build outcomes into everything um, so yeah we've got big plans <laughs> brilliant thank you and working across areas and thinking about um, using each other's strengths and ideas as well, but making that outcome-focused fa paperwork 
um, start to lead the work yeah, a bit better. Thank you. What I heard today, what we heard today was quite refreshing and uh, empowering, I would say. From Wrexham Children's Services point of view, I'd like to say the change started a long time ago. We have a long way to go. Uh, I think we we are stuck, like other authorities, in relation to the forms and, and the vision to be implemented from the frontline staff. And I think we need a lot of support to implement that from now on, a lot of training, a lot of support from everybody to, to implement it, this vision. Um, I think other services also said that they, they started to implement the change yeah. and there is a lot of work there to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to work together and cooperate more with other agencies to be succe successful in what we do. And I think we'll take away some of the tips that other uh, counties give us today in, in presentations they've, they've done. So some vision of having, uh, making some presentations to other people and joining together and having some of those workshops and trying to keep that uh, momentum for yourselves, yeah, so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So a plan emerging for that. Here. Maria. Um, in terms of Neath Batalba, I think that we just need now to keep the momentum going. Um, um, but we're also at a point of auditing our um, both our assessments and plans and just making sure that that language um, is is um, in, in the language of the people then. So that's where we're at at the moment. We just need to continue with that. Yeah, and that auditing is a local thing, but there's also quite a lot to share, isn't there, across all the authorities once that work is done. So we need to be thinking about ways in which we can share. Brilliant. Um, one of the things that we um, talked about was that you know, we've done quite a bit in Monmouthshire, but of course there are lots of other people that are involved in um, the people that we're working with. Um, and we need to look at opportunities about how we influence how they work. And even if we could get to the point where we're getting people like GPs um, and some of the other health colleagues and the voluntary sector to be working with people and not doing two people, um, just to sort of start to close the circle a little bit. So really that ripple out into other uh, professionals, particularly into health staff, is an important aspect. And here? <laughs> um, I think for us it was um, about supporting the wider workforce and keeping the enthusiasm going because that can be quite hard. Um, we know within the teams that the social workers are doing a really, really good job, but it's about keeping that going, that consistency, working with managers as well and, and wider afield. I think that was it, wasn't it? It was about the fact that like today, we're three social workers, but we're glad our higher management came with us because that makes it easier for us to, to spread the good word in a way. We are in the middle of an evaluation. We did a very small pilot um, because of constraints of resources. But uh, the next step for us is I think there's been some positive results to share. And then I'm hoping that we can roll it out. Conway has expressed a commitment, all being well, <laughs> to go forward with science of safety and collaborative skills because they're so integrated, really. Um, within adults and children's services. So that's going to be a big project plan for us in the future. And I think that's going to go ahead at this stage. So a lot of themes for people is about joint adult and service going forward, adults and children's services going forward together with a clear strategic plan. That's great. Newport. Thank you. I'd echo um, what you've just said about children's services, because we still have a very different um, 
point of view, I think, between children's and adult services and with children with a disability. Um, I like the contingency plans. We thought that was a good idea. So there was more stuff on record. And I also think about getting sen senior managers, between certainly the children's and adult services, talking about what adult services are doing and get it, it out, rolled out into children's. Came across strongly the uh, risk management through safety plans and contingency plans. Solid piece of work, a really good focus for people. Hello. <laughs> Rich. I think the thing that struck me today is the, um, the need to keep things really as simple and as straightforward as possible and not to overcomplicate things because I think there is almost a an invisible pull of systems and processes to make you complicate things and to almost think of 10 reasons why you can't do things when really you just focus on the one bit, the one nugget that's really worked and, and, and develop that and take that. And sometimes that's <coughs> a bit difficult and it's a good reminder certainly for me and for some of the work that I'm doing that we need to really keep hold of that approach. <laughs> Keeping it simple. That the work's complex, but producing and demonstrating it is simple. Billy. We took a bit, uh, bit of time to reflect on what was going on in our own authority, and we've got children and adult services on the table, and we shared our experiences because we still work in silos. So it was interesting to see what was going on in adult services versus children's services. And we also talked a bit about the benefits of being able to share learning whilst we work within different areas. There are still, you know, within a, an outcome-focused approach that there are still learning to share between the two divisions, yeah. Okay. So again, uh, a focus on integrating the principles, the underpinnings and the approach across adults and children. Bridge uh, Just to, to echo a lot of the, the comments that have been made uh, already, we, we, I think, need to take stock and identify what elements of a um, outcome-focused organisation looks like, what needs to be in place and then audit adults and children to see how far away or near we are because we're at different places and we, we have in some parts of the service elements of this um, already uh, operational but I think we just need to coordinate it and bring it together more. Um, in terms of influence in practice I think we feel quite confident that we can go ahead and do that and have a plan to do that but it's the rest of the organisation that needs to fall in place with us, we feel. So your plan's there, it's about how we pull other people in and go forward en masse, yeah. Thank you. How's Cardiff doing? <laughs> I think for us this was a, a really interesting opportunity to hear from other areas. Um, and I think from each one of the three areas who presented, we got quite a lot out of each presentation. I thought they were excellent. Um, and it's really a lot of it is about the language, the way people use their language, the simple approach that people are taking, not making it complicated, which I think we're all guilty of at times. Um, but I think for us, it was a real opportunity to review where we were and to go away feeling there are things we're still doing, we have to improve on, but we are moving forward. Um, pretty, pretty similar with uh, what uh, has just been said. I think it was really good opportunity to look at what we've got going in, in Blaine Grand in the two children and adults and uh, looking at the future and how we can use some of the tools that we've seen today and projects that were presented but also internal resources to make this work and keep it high on the agenda. And I think it's great to see that for social care awareness is such an important thing and it keeps it going. Thank you. Thank you. Marvellous. So lots of learning already today. And uh, Oh, I've been to, yes, I've been to everyone. Have I missed anyone out? No. Uh, lots of learning already today across the areas. Lots of ideas about maintaining momentum uh, within our own service areas and across health and social care. 
um, and we'll continue to meet and share some of those uh, ideas in November.